to teach you how to uh, bleed an anti-lock brake system on a motorcycle. Uh, this needs to be done at a maximum of every couple of years. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, ABS brake module and why there's a specific process for bleeding anti-lock brake systems over conventional brake systems. On a Harley, this is your ABS module. It's on the right side under the side cover. And what happens is when you pull the handle or you push the pedal on a brake, that fluid actually comes all the way down into your ABS module into one of the chambers, then it sends it back out to the brakes. The ABS module is connected to the ECM module, your electronic control module, which is underneath the seat. When you apply full pressure and you hold that pressure, which is how you operate anti-lock brake systems, it causes a pulsating action that prevents your wheels from locking up and causing instability during braking. It also allows the bike to brake faster, and that's all controlled with this ABS module. The reason there's a different process for bleeding is because the ABS module cannot be, cannot be bled if air gets into it. You have to actually take the motorcycle into the dealership, they have to hook the computer into the ECM module, and through the Digital Technician 2 software, they have to electronically bleed this ABS module to get all the air out. But if you're careful and you do this process correctly, you can bleed an ABS motorcycle without having to hook it up to a digital technician. The whole key to that is not allowing air into line from either the brake caliper or from the uh, master cylinder. You want to keep that entire unit from, from master cylinder all the way to the brakes sealed and free of air. And that's what we're going to show you how to do next. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get prepared. Uh, we're going to prepare the master cylinder so that we don't uh, have any, any chance of the brake fluid getting on the handlebars and the painted points around it once we pull the cap off. So I'm just going to take some painter's tape. I may have to take little pieces. I'm going to tape off just below the, uh, the line from the cap all the way around. And this is just a preventative or a safety thing so that you protect your paint. Okay, now we're going to take the cap off the master cylinder. There's the cap. And there's your seal. Okay, I've also covered my, my tank and I've uh, covered my fender as well. Okay, looking down in here now, you can kind of see the brake fluid. It's a yellowish brown color. Uh, that's a sign of war brake fluid. Uh, this has not been done on this bike yet. It's, a, it's about a year and a half old, so it's a good time to do it. Okay, at this point, we're ready to start bleeding the brakes. And this is where you're going to need a second person. So what you're going to do is you're going to have somebody up at the top, and they're going to watch this fluid level, and they're going to make sure that it does not empty out, while the other person is going to be controlling the bleeder valve with the uh, brake bleeding uh, device and the other one's going to be pouring in consistently to make sure that this doesn't go down. If this gets down to the entry point, it's going to, look, looking down there, you'll see the holes of where the brake fluid goes down into the brake line. It may be in a different place depending on what type of bike you have. If it gets down past that and it introduces air into the line, at that point, you're better off just stopping the process and taking the bike to the dealership and having it digitally bled because there's no way to get the air out of the line at that point. So it's critical, and I, I stress it is critical, that this reservoir never run out of fluid during this process. Okay, so now next thing we gotta do is we gotta, we gotta open up our brake fluid. Um, when you buy it, make sure it's still sealed. You're not gonna unseal this until you get ready to pour this in. So at the point we get ready to pour this in, it, it will begin absorbing moisture in the air. That's just how DOT4 brake fluid works. And this is where you're going to control the uh, flow of brake fluid once we get ready to begin the bleeding process. Okay, then we're going to put our hose on from our brake, brake bleeding tool, whatever manufacturer you have. And this will give you the opportunity to uh, get your wrench on just underneath it where the threads are. And this is, again, how we're going to control the fluid that's coming through here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to pump your, uh, your bleed tool I'm going to go up to about 10 pounds and then we're going to release this bleed valve and it's going to start pulling uh, brake fluid through at, that, through at that point. 
There, there it is. So you can see it going. And then she'll be pulling, pouring brake fluid in the master cylinder as we're bleeding down here. Now you will notice when you're doing this, up top, it does bleed slower with an ABS system than it will with a non-ABS system. That's because we're pulling brake fluid all the way through the ABS module. So it shouldn't be too much longer before, as we look through the line, that we're getting clear fluid. Matter of fact, looking at this as it comes out, it is almost totally clear at this point. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so it's clear now coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our wrench back onto the bleeder valve. And we're going to tighten it. With pressure still on with the bleed tool. So we don't want any air going back up in the line. And then since it's still pressurized, when we pull this off, it'll suck the fluid down into the reservoir and we won't have any mess. There you go. Okay, I wanted to show you the before and after. Uh, I kept them separate. This is this is what I got before the, the first reservoir full. You see how brownish yellow it is? And then this is the, the, the new, once I got all of the old out. It's a little yellow just because of the plastic of the, uh, the container, but as you can see, it is clear. So now I have uh, clean brake fluid in those lines. Okay, now also remember after you've um, bled one of your calipers, to put your dust cap back on. Now, if you've got dual calipers, such as this uh, street glide, you're gonna have to do both sides. So we're gonna go to the other side because you're gonna have this one little piece of line before it meets the junction up under the forks that's still gonna have old fluid in it. And we need to get it out as well before we move on to the back brakes. Okay, before you put your uh, seal back on, you may wanna clean it. Uh, you may need some brake cleaner just to get the old fluid off. Okay, while the rubber seals out, you're gonna to wanna to check around the edge for cracks because you'll oftentimes, depending on how long it's been there, get a crack where the uh, master cylinder cover pushes down, especially if you over tighten it. If it's cracked, be sure to replace it because you'll get uh, air and moisture into that master cylinder. And you're not really concerned about the air, you're concerned about the moisture that could break down that brake fluid and uh, cause brake issues. Next, we're going to put the cover back on. Before you do so, somewhere on your master cylinder, there's going to be a full level mark. Mine is right there. It actually says full. Um, if, it's, if it's too high, which possibly could happen, you can take a, a paper towel, a lint-free paper towel, just dip it down in there just on the edge and suck a little bit out until it goes down to the full line. And you just come around the edge. You're going to want to clean this seal point as good as possible so that it makes a, a good seal, a moisture free seal is what we're looking for. Okay, now we're ready to do the rear brakes and the process is exactly the same. You're going to take the top off just like you did with the uh, front brakes, the cover. Okay, as with the front brake, you're going to take the dust cover off. You're going to have somebody at the front of the bike ready with the uh, brake fluid. Take your hose of your brake, brake leading system, pump it up, get pressure in it. Make sure there's no leaks, because you don't want a leak to be in there. It's not gonna uh, suck as properly or as much as it's supposed to. And then you're going to release the pressure while they carefully watch the front. 
Keep your pressure up. And we're doing pretty good. Our fluid's clear. So I'm going to go ahead while it's while I got pressure. I'm going to tighten the valve. With pressure on, suck it back down the hose and we're done. Clean your bleeder valve. Put your dust cap on. Okay, then we're going to put everything back together. So you're going to take your seal. Okay, and now your cover. Okay, last thing we need to do is we need to pump the brakes to be sure that we have pressure, which we do. It's super tight. It's tighter than it was. It just builds the pressure up and ensures there's no air in the line. If this thing starts to push all the way down, that means you got air in the line. You've got to take it into the shop. Then we go up to the uh, handlebars, okay. apply pressure, pump it up. It's good and tight, so we know there's no air in the line there as well. And also, all right, at that point, you've successfully bled your anti-lock brake system on a motorcycle. Okay, so that was the, uh, the whole process of bleeding an anti-lock brake system on a Harley-Davidson. The uh, principles can be applied to any type of bike. It doesn't, doesn't matter the manufacturer. The, uh, the, the, the big thing to remember is don't let the ABS uh, module get air in it. Don't ever allow the line to get air in it, and you can, you can uh, successfully bleed the brake line that way.